Your code name for this mission will be Naked Snake. Solo covert actions are standard Fox operating procedure. This is a stealth mission. Snake, don't forget this is a covert operation. There are lots of bad guys and only one of you. Snake, try to remember some of the basics of CQC. No, I swear. No, it's called CQC, a basic form of close quarters combat. He and I developed it together. Hey, Snake, since when did you learn how to use CQC? I got the training back when I was in Fox Out. Snake, is there anyone you like? Someone special? It's nice, isn't it? Being alive. Come on. Let's enjoy life. Uh, the Shagahod was a major threat. That thing could corner like you wouldn't believe. Built pretty tough, too. So you were the one who took it down. I get it. First, I destroyed the radome. That will force him to open up the pilot's seat. Right! Look after Snake. He's the toughest son of a bitch I've ever known. <laughs> It's gonna be a lonely battle. No good or evil. No winners or losers. Welcome, Metal Gear Solid enthusiasts. Today we dwell into the heart of a tactical espionage story as we compare two legendary figures in the gaming world, both Big Boss and Solid Snake. These iconic characters are central to the Metal Gear Solid series and have faced some of the most challenging and impossible infiltration missions that would test the emotional strength and the will of these larger-than-life soldiers. On one side, we have the legendary Big Boss, a soldier with a complex legacy, a master tactician, and the founder of organizations that would shape the course of history. On the other side, there's Solid Snake, the genetically engineered clone, the Big Boss, and the man who faced seemingly insurmountable odds to thwart global threats. In this in-depth discussion, we'll be taking a closer look into the strengths and the abilities of both Big Boss and Solid Snake to determine who really is the superior soldier by diving into some of their most important infiltration missions to show the exact skills that they gave and really who has the most strength in determining who has the better skills. So grab your cardboard boxes, strap on your sneaking suits, and join me as we venture into the world of these two extraordinary soldiers. The legendary Enigma, Big Boss, would utilize such fighting styles as the most advanced style in the world, which would be close quarters combat, CQC. It was a system of combined combat techniques, which allowed for rapid alternation between armed and hand-to-hand -hand combat while engaging enemy personnel. Of course, it was developed by the boss and Big Boss himself. Being the legendary tactician that Big Boss is, he has the ability to strategize every single move, predicting and understanding body language of the enemy combatants. Prior to August 1964, Jack, Big Boss, served in the Green Berets for several years and had become vastly experienced at sniping in urban and marine environments and also had his fair share of eating snakes and different animals during previous survival training exercises. Undoubtedly, Big Boss is no ordinary man. His reflexes are so sharp and quick, he can see an incoming attack before the move is even made, making him very dangerous within close quarters combat. This makes Big Boss truly a force to be reckoned with by subduing the Ocelot unit within seconds, and with his immense combat knowledge to be able to capitalize in difficult situations. Possible. You ejected the first bullet by hand, didn't you? I see what you were trying to do. But testing a technique you've only heard about in the middle of battle wasn't very smart. You were asking to have your gun jam on you. Besides, I don't think you're cut out for an automatic in the first place. You tend to twist your elbow to absorb the recoil. That's more of a revolver technique. Big Boss's combat experience would only grow larger with inefficiency, as fighting the Boss herself, who is the renowned mother of the Special Forces and the leader of the Cobra unit, would be the master of the CQC techniques. Yes, while Snake would take himself a bit of a beating, he would learn and master the art of countering and understanding the art of CQC all that much more. It goes about saying that the Boss was the greatest soldier of her generation, of her time, but of course Snake would learn so much from the Boss that throughout his several encounters would only grow stronger. In the typical CQC stance, the user held their gun, a one-handed weapon such as a pistol with their dominant hand while supporting it with the other hand, which held their CQC knife. 
By using this stance, the gun remained steady and accurate engagement of opponents outside the range of unarmed combat, something at the time that most soldiers around the world was not using, but something that Big Boss would incorporate into his style. And just what are you doing there? <laughs> In close range combat, a knife can sometimes be more useful than a gun. By doing this, I'll be able to hold a knife at the same time and still keep the gun steady. That way, I can instantly switch between a gun battle and a knife fight. The combination of mastery of technique and ability, Snake would be able to overthrow bigger and larger opponents through quick wit and skill to be able to disarm opponents such as Volgin. What was that? Some kind of judo? CQC closely resembled other martial arts such as judo or jujitsu, of course fashioned and reinvented around combat and within military engagement. It goes about saying throughout the majority of Snake's battles aside from using guns and especially in Operation Snake Eater, most of the bosses you can practically fight using hand-to-hand -hand combat, making Big Boss a very formidable, dangerous opponent. And at the very end in the closing chapter of Operation Snake Eater, Big Boss would then face the boss in what it seems to be the final battle to prove who can be the one true boss. And throughout most of this engagement, Big Boss is well versed on his CQC this time. The boss even quotes about how Big Boss's skills have gotten better and how much stronger he has become. Aside from all his previous combat knowledge, it goes about saying that in Operation Snake Eater, that Big Boss had truly mastered the arts of close quarters combat. Snake, try to remember some of the basics of CQC. There is no doubt that CQC is a great perfect mixture of the martial arts that make the best fighting style that is ever known to be. A fighting style amongst many in the world that would outdo most combat styles that would live on decades after and continue to span throughout Big Boss's career in his military tactical operations. <laughs> Throughout his career, he would show no signs of slowing down through consecutive means of CQC to take out several opponents at once. Age doesn't slow Snake down one bit. Excellent, Snake. Age hasn't slowed you down one bit. There's no doubt that Big Boss is the greatest legendary mercenary of all time. And with this age brings around a sense of knowledge and wisdom. And even with this age, he hasn't lost that sense of speed and ability to be able to take his opponents out quickly in a matter of seconds. With Big Boss being in prime physical condition, which is clearly noticeable within Ground Zeroes as we can see his peak physical condition, he is in good health. And incorporating new combat styles such as CQB by using means of kicks and punches alongside different karate styles. His physicality, his mentality, it goes about saying that in Ground Zeroes he's definitely probably at the most strongest he's been here in terms of his hand-to-hand -hand combat and been able to throw enemies around like a feather. Definitely think it goes about saying that Big Boss is at the core peak of his prime at this point. David aka Solid Snake, the son of Big Boss, would make his way into the military. David was introduced to the Green Berets just like his father as a teen. Solid Snake joined Big Boss's Special Forces unit, Foxhound, during which time he'd received the codename Solid Snake. While going underground, Foxhound's training regime became high-altitude skydiving logistics, closed-circuit, open-circuit combat diving, and free climbing. Big Boss personally trained him in the use of CQC and taught him all the techniques and the importance of having the will to survive on the battlefield. It's really questionable, and it's up for debate if Big Boss actually taught Solid Snake everything he knew. In the beginning stages of Snake's career, he wouldn't use the techniques and skills of CQC, in a sense more using the skills of CQB. Advanced CQB techniques were first introduced into Metal Gear Solid as a means of fighting unarmed. The player can either beat up the enemy using a combo of punches and kicks, throwing them on their back after grabbing them, or placing them into a chokehold. In terms of infield experience, it goes about saying that Big Boss has had widely more experience in terms of putting it to good use. That's not to say that Solid Snake couldn't use CQC, it was more his moral compass and his feelings towards Big Boss. He felt because Big Boss had betrayed their unit, he said it didn't feel right to use it, using a technique taught by a traitor. Hey Snake, since when did you learn how to use CQC? I got the training back when I was in Foxhound but I never used it in actual combat. 
You had those skills all this time and never used them? Why? The man who taught me was my former commander in Foxhound. Big boss? Never felt right using a technique learned from a man who betrayed his unit. Thinking back, CQC as a concept was way ahead of its time. Nobody was using it yet. Not the Green Berets, or the SEALs, or the CIA paramilitaries. In Metal Gear Solid 4, we really come to understand why Solid Snake really is the legendary soldier of his time. To be able to use CQC, considering that he doesn't have much experience with it in the field, and come back after all these years to use it, and dare I say, was more impressive in terms of his own father in taking out several units than the Ocelot unit themselves during Operation Snake Eater. Not only is Big Mama's unit probably way more advanced than the likes of the Ocelot unit in terms of combat, it's the very fact that at Snake's age and given on his health and condition, that he effortlessly picks apart the entire unit by disarming them and making sure that they pose no threat. It's evident we can see that Big Boss has taught Solid Snake very well in the terms of using the arts of CQC, whilst at the same time using his own forms of combat with a mixture of CQB and other mixed martial arts as such, whilst as combining a gun with a knife, but using it with an assault rifle. By using his genius strategic mindset to be able to use one soldier in particular as a body shield. There is no doubt when it comes to CQC that Solid Snake is up there with the best. Very impressive CQC, Snake. No doubt about it, he is the legendary soldier. Metal Gear Solid Twin Snakes, which is basically a replica of Metal Gear Solid 1, it has its differences in several ways, not what I'm going to dive into, but of course some people don't feel it like it's an exact faithful recreation of the beloved classic on PS1, but we can't pick points out of Twin Snakes that really do exemplify Snake's great combat skills. There's many discussions and arguments within the MGS community between the original Metal Gear and Twin Snakes, not one that I want to get into, but in all fairness, it wasn't such a bad recreation, such as improved graphics, nicer controls, but also the way that it demonstrates a lot more on Snake's ability in terms of hand-to-hand -hand combat. Some of the scenes get considered quite far-fetched, but there's no denying how cool the action is, such as the fight that Snake has with Grey Fox, one of Big Boss's greatest lieutenants, who no doubt has some definite training within the ability of hand-to-hand -hand too. Even without the use of CQC, Solid Snake can throw hands. With the final battle against Liquid, you get to see a more spirited approach on how he would fight in a street fight. With each several punch and kick, there is no doubt that Solid Snake really makes it count, landing devastating blows that literally lift people off their feet. <laughs> And at the end of Metal Gear Solid 4, without a doubt, Solid Snake's most challenging opponent, Ocelot, the son of the boss, greatly and immensely trained within CQC himself, where in the events of Operation Snake Eater, it didn't take Ocelot very long to learn and pick up the skills of CQC, giving Big Boss one of the biggest challenges of all time. This would definitely be the legacy moment that would define really who was the master of the CQC within the living age of those who still carried the art of such skill, not no cheap imitations. This really was a true fight to the death, a real spirited war between two warriors, and definitely by far the biggest challenge that Solid Snake would face. Metal Gear Solid 4 is a true testimony of how damn good Solid Snake skills really were in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Usually a lot of great people who are very talented have great skills that they are a little bit rusty with. But this just really comes to show, just like father and son, these are no ordinary men to begin with, carrying out only what super legendary soldiers are capable of doing. With Ocelot even remarking just how much like Snake is like his father, Big Boss. Just like your father. <laughs> your 
pretty good. You're pretty good. Pretty good. Once again, Big Boss and Solid Snake would be reunited in one of the most emotional scenes perhaps in the entire franchise. This is an interesting moment within the game because we get to see really a dynamics between two emotional sides of each character. The beauty of the Metal Gear Solid community is everyone has different interpretations, especially regarding the two iconic characters that are beloved throughout the franchise that have both been through the impossible and the most intense infiltration combat missions that we have known. This scene when the moment of CQC is very brief, but we get a clear understanding who really does have the upper hand in terms of the dominance in CQC. Some people are going to speculate many different reasons for why Solid Snake didn't get the upper hand in this situation. Was it shock the fact that Big Boss was supposedly dead and has now appeared in front of Snake, with both characters in physicality being somewhat matched as they both are in the similar age zone, is one thing that is evidently clear is that Big Boss really does take the stand of being the CQC master. Well, that one's up for debate, but quite clearly we can see in this scene, in this emotionally gripping moment, that Big Boss really does have the upper hand in terms of this emotional gripping moment of CQC. characters naturally are not within their prime. They don't have that youthful energy that they once did. But one thing is for certain is that both of these characters are masters of the hand-to-hand -hand combat techniques. And it's absolutely undeniable given how throughout all the Metal Gear games in the franchise, the storytelling is truly amazing. Big Boss has accomplished four infiltration missions in his entire career. Starting with Operation Snake Eater, noticeably it takes place within a jungle. This might be Big Boss's most challenging and yet impressive infiltration mission and would have to survive this harsh difficult environment for approximately four days. At the beginning of Snake's objective to rescue Sokolov, it's quite difficult as he has to overcome swamps that are bottomless to the pit. Snake, be careful of that swamp. What's dangerous about it? It's a bottomless swamp. A bottomless swamp? Yes. The mud in that swamp is highly viscous. And then of course we have crocodiles that seem to be lingering around that are not afraid to snap and bite you. But be careful when capturing an Indian gavial. Normally they're cowardly creatures, but the ones in the forest there are belligerent. Apparently they attack humans. What do you mean? They weren't the direct subject of any serious research, but some think they may have become violent as a side effect of the atomic research that was conducted nearby. Operation Snake Eater really is a true test of survival. The guy didn't pack any launchables, so everything that he has to find is within the jungle in terms of surviving. There's a vast selection of what Snake can find out there to eat, all of which have different impacts on how they affect your stamina gauge. It's important to note that even though this is an infiltration mission, sneaking in the forest poses a challenge in itself for both having to eat to survive and to avoid dangerous poisonous creatures. <laughs> Whilst this is a solo sneaking mission, Snake would actually have a handful of people on the radio that would be really useful in terms of giving him support and assistance. Especially at the beginning of his mission, the Virtuous mission, where at the time, even the boss was there to give Snake the support he needed. And most notably and the most useful within Snake's mission have to be Paramedic and Signet. Both are specialized in their areas that can help Snake. Paramedic is the medical correspondent for this mission. Ask her about hunting for food and medical treatment. Yo! You're Snake, aren't you? And you're Sigint? None other. I heard that you're an expert on weapons, equipment, and cutting-edge technology. Close. Huh? I am THE expert on weapons, equipment, and cutting-edge technology. Within these jungles in the Soviet Union, it is truly harsh. The environment is dense and teeming with wildlife and harsh weather conditions. There's always something that poses a challenge and a threat, and that isn't just enemy soldiers. It could be something as simple as having leeches attached to you.
There's also the fact that Big Boss has to sneak through several enemy base camps too, wired with electrified barbed wire, helicopters, and a vast supply of Soviet soldiers that are occupying the base with big giant LMG machine guns. Even big giant huge cave systems that are so hard to navigate through considering how dark it is. It's the things such as surviving through all these different climates and conditions that really make Big Boss's skills stand out in means of his ways of truly impressive survival. Operation Snake Eater truly is a test of different environments, as Snake has to find himself traveling through areas that are also tightly confined, where stealth and using camo necessarily isn't always going to be the option to get you through, unlike using the jungle environment where you can completely be camouflaged, making stealth a lot more easier. There is always an obstacle and something that you always have to overcome, including being in certain sections of the forest is littered with traps and pitfalls and wires and nooses, with trip wire booby traps rigged with explosives and spikes. It isn't also outside in jungle environments. Snake also finds himself in urban facilities and buildings, which is definitely a lot more challenging than using the jungle environment which gives you absolute camouflage, whereas being inside a facility or a base makes it all the more challenging considering that the corners are a lot more tightly spaced and there's only minimal places that you can hide, making stealth infiltration a lot more difficult. But by far one of Big Boss's most impressive feats of infiltration that would be none other than the Groznygrad facility, which is considered impenetrable and hard to infiltrate. Hey. You're not thinking of going to Grozny Grad. Are you mad? It's an impenetrable fortress. I'm sure it is. You'll be killed. I'll take my chances. Your primary objective is to climb the mountains and rendezvous with Eva. There's no need to face the ocelots in battle. The shaft leading to the mountains is located in the northeast part of the northern area of the woods. Keep an eye out for ambushes and head northeast. The ladder climb in Metal Gear Solid 3 is the most noticeably iconic moments within the game that a lot of the fans will remember. It's unique, and of course the climb itself takes approximately 3 minutes and 30 seconds to climb. What makes Operation Snake Eater so intense is that it's a race against the clock to save the world from all-out nuclear annihilation. This moment here is a great way of Big Boss to reflect all that he has been through, but it's also one of the most challenging things as he has to climb this ladder that seems to go on for miles. It really does go without saying that this really is a test of strength, will, and character throughout endless different means of traversing different environments. The Krasny Gorge Mountains in Metal Gear Solid 3 not only provide a challenging gameplay environment, but it's a true test of Big Boss's amazing infiltration skills, as one has to navigate through helicopters, soldiers, guards, even guys on hovercrafts, and arguably some of the most dangerous weaponry as some soldiers are carrying rocket launchers, even flamethrowers. The real test of infiltration happens to be Grozny Grad. Grozny Grad is heavily guarded by Soviet soldiers, making infiltration very challenging. The facility is equipped with surveillance systems, even tanks and patrols. It's definitely the base of operation in terms of guarding the Shagohod. Both inside and outside this fortress really is the ultimate obstacle that Big Boss would have to undertake in this operation. It evidently proved massively challenging for Big Boss as he would find himself inside the Grozny Grad prison. The facility is massive and widely vast, and in terms of accessibility, one needs co-clearance in order to get to certain sections and locations. But with the brilliance of Big Boss's intelligence to being able to escape the prison, and without any equipment whatsoever or camouflage, and being severely injured with one of his eyes missing. It appeared that sneaking out was more difficult than sneaking in, as there are spotlights everywhere, and not to mention dogs too with a keen sense of smell. Big Boss maintains peak physical fitness, allowing him to traverse through obstacles and climb structures that most soldiers couldn't handle. His mental toughness, his patience and mental resilience and the ability to handle stressful situations, Big Boss's experience in the field and its ability to remain focused under pressure contribute to his success as an infiltrator. Snake! With Big Boss's amazing determination, he would find himself once again making his second attempt on infiltrating Groznygrad. His adaptability and perseverance is what really makes him an impressive soldier. 
a mission that would arguably break most soldiers throughout every single piece of environment he's had to traverse through in order to save the world, being the master of the art of donning a disguise and remaining undetected. And if it doesn't get any more impressive than all of that, the very fact that Big Boss has amazing exfiltration skills after being hunted by a massive hunting party, where he has to look after both himself and Eva, who is massively wounded, along with Snake himself. Including the very fact that he also has to go out of his way to hunt for food at the same time whilst being hunted in order to make sure that Eva has enough energy to keep up. Operation Snake Eater really exemplifies why Big Boss is one of the greatest soldiers that ever lived, with a mission that had an unseemable amount of odds that Big Boss would overcome, and a mission that means the very fate of the world hanged in the balance of this one man, would be the legend and the story that would serve on throughout generations that would arguably be one of the toughest infiltration missions of all time. The San Geronimo incident poses several difficulties for Big Boss. At the beginning of his mission, Big Boss is isolated and lacks the support of a large organization or allies. This isolation makes it challenging for him to gather intelligence, form alliances, and navigate the complex web of betrayals and conspiracies. And to add to the fact that he doesn't have the equipment that he did in Operation Snake Eater, limited to only a MK-22 tranquilizer and a Fox Unit sneaking suit, stripping him of the vast set of equipment that he once had before. Just limited with no camo gauge, having to use the environment wisely in terms of sneaking instead of relying on camo. San Geronimo is heavily guarded by enemy forces, including soldiers and advanced security systems. Infiltrating the facility requires stealth and great evasion and the ability to overcome various security measures. In Portable Ops, Big Boss needs to recruit soldiers to his cause and build an army from scratch, convincing soldiers with his charisma to defect to his side to involve strategic planning, rescue missions, and persuasive skills. The recruitment process is essential for strengthening his position and facing the challenges ahead. With Big Boss's great charisma, establishing and managing a base is a key element of the mission. Big Boss needs to allocate resources, assign personnel to different tasks, and ensure the efficiency functioning of his base to support his future operations in terms of establishing his success of his mission. With intelligence gathering and relying on logistics that he finds along the way to use his weaponry, with Big Boss's strategic intelligence would ensure his mission's success in order to overthrow his former unit. Once again, save the world from impending doom. What are you doing? Those weapons won't do any good! Get out of here before you're caught up in the blast and killed! You risked your life to save our motherland! Now it's our turn to defend your country! You've given us a real reason to fight, Big Boss! During the events of Peace Walker in Costa Rica, might arguably be one of the most toughest infiltration missions known to the Metal Gear Solid franchise. With the new age of artificial intelligence and advanced technology, stealth missions have definitely become way more difficult. Enemy soldiers patrol different areas with varying search patterns. Memorizing these patterns and timing movements becomes essential for Big Boss's success navigating through the enemy territory without being spotted. And just like Operation Snake Eater, with a vast approach towards urban and also jungle environments. The good news is thanks to Big Boss establishing his own private army, it makes undertaking these missions a lot more easier to navigate through. But one can't emphasize enough, even with the assistance of Snake's private military and all the additional equipment, it doesn't remove the difficulty of how hard this mission is. With huge military escort checkpoints that make their way through different sections of the map that Snake must sneak through, makes it all the more difficult considering that there's armored vehicles and armored soldiers and all of this whilst remaining undetected. Peace Walker introduces enemy vehicles, that including tanks and armored personal carriers, which can patrol all different areas. Dealing with these vehicles requires careful planning and may involve using heavy weapons or laying traps and a great deal of guerrilla warfare tactics. In Costa Rica, it features larger groups of enemy soldiers compared to previous titles, increasing the challenge of remaining undetected. 
Each different soldier has their own special unique ability, such as weapon and better supplies of military uniforms as heavy armor, making it trying to land a headshot a lot more difficult as you can't pierce through the armor. With each single unit and soldier being assigned to their special class in different designated areas that are suited to their skill sets given on the environment and task that they have been given. Throughout every majority of the Metal Gear franchise, there hasn't been a wide variety in selection of enemy personnel than Peace Walker. Amanda's crew calls the outdoor ones patrolmen, and the indoor ones guards. They might look like they're just out for a stroll, but don't be fooled. They're sharper than they look. Obviously, they can hold their own in combat. And with body armor, it'll be even harder to take them down. Amanda's crew calls them commandos. Unlike the patrolmen, these guys will actively, relentlessly track and hunt you down like hounds. Hmm. <laughs> hounds to hunt a former foxhound. Bring it on. Also, be aware that commando gear includes body armor, so don't think you can deal with them by going in guns blazing. There's one type of commando you really need to watch out for, and that's the kind toting shotguns. They can take a few hits and still keep charging you. And believe me, you don't want them closing in between those shotgun blasts. When they start charging, you need to stop them immediately. Amanda's crew calls them scouts. They'll blend themselves in with the terrain and the vegetation. Then, when they see you, they'll swoop in. They fight pretty much like commandos, and will use clearing techniques to flush you out. In addition to wielding normal weapons, the scouts also carry wires. Uh, sounds like these guys know their CQC. Could be. We've been getting reports of CQC attacks being blocked by wires. Ah, ghillie suits. Not much difference between them and any other scout in terms of combat ability, but it does make them harder to spot. Enemy tanks, armored vehicles, and attack choppers are always accompanied by a combat squad. The soldiers aren't particularly tough on their own. What makes them formidable is how well they work together as a team. As if you didn't have enough to worry about with a machine. Enemies carrying shields can be a real pain in the ass. To hear Amanda tell it. Trying to fight those bastards while they sit behind their shields taking pistol shots at you is enough to make you want to rip your hair out. And it's not just soldiers that Big Boss has to contend with in his mission, also flying kidnapper drones with machine guns installed. Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker exemplifies exactly why Big Boss is the master of stealth infiltration, for throughout the years with advancements within technology and equipment, it makes stealth infiltration very difficult, one that Big Boss can obviously overcome. Snake, you can forget about civil liberties where you're headed. God only knows what they'd do to you if you got caught. Do not let that happen. The area was originally only for detaining refugees from countries like Cuba and Haiti. But a few years ago, the CIA and its likes started using it as a black site. Ground Zeroes would be Big Boss's last stealth infiltration mission. Camp Omega, a black site, which is a secret off-the-grid facility where clandestine or classified activities take place. Black sites are often used by intelligence agencies or military organizations to conduct operations that require a high level of secrecy and discretion. These sites are not typically or not officially acknowledged by the government, and their existence and activities are kept classified. In the context of Ground Zero's Camp Omega, the military base in Cuba, is where Big Boss's last mission would take place. It serves as a black site. The facility is operated by the United States and is used for the detention and interrogation of individuals involved in covert activities. Prisoners of war. It's definitely one place Big Boss would not want to be captured, as he himself is considered a threat to the United States and would most likely be executed. The concept of a black site adds a layer of intrigue and secrecy to the narrative, reinforcing the covert and high-stakes nature of the mission. Elf operation tactics are one of Big Boss's strong suits, such as choosing nighttime as a perfect way to use the night as cover and the rain as a way to dampen the sound. Camp Omega is heavily fortified and checkpointed. There are several spotlights and several patrolling marines. With time constraints to rescue both Paz and Chico, Ground Zeroes emphasizes speed and efficiency. It's a race against the clock completing the main mission, and given on the fact this is a black side with no civil rights, it's most possible that Paz and Chico could be eliminated along with any of her prisoners of war. Big Boss really must hurry in terms of his infiltration and as well as his exfiltration. At this point, Big Boss would be vastly experienced in the art of stealth infiltration. At this point, you could say he was in his peak. It's definitely highlighted in Ground Zeroes that all Big Boss's previous stealth missions have definitely come to fruition, as he is highly successful.
Ground Zeroes is quite a big and expensive map, and the entire time that Big Boss must exfiltrate, he is carrying somebody on his shoulder to safety. Given on Big Boss's physicality, he makes it look easy. Big Boss is truly a great testimony to exactly what it is to be a stealth infiltration master and an expert of the arts of sneaking, and Ground Zeroes would be a great way to end the legacy and the chapter of one of the greatest soldiers of all time. In 1995, the rookie Solid Snake faces several challenges whilst infiltrating Outer Heaven. While Solid Snake has had previous experience before by being trained by Big Boss and having experience within the Green Berets, would be implemented into one of the most important missions that Solid Snake would have to undertake within stealth infiltration. Noticeably, what makes Solid Snake's first ever mission very impressive to that of Big Boss's in Operation Snake Eater is that Snake begins the mission with minimal equipment, in fact practically none, and must find weapons and items throughout the facility. Outer Heaven is a maze-like complex with multiple floors, secret passages, and hidden rooms. Solid Snake must explore and familiarize himself with the layout, all while avoiding detection from cameras and traps and also soldiers all to uncover the true nature of Big Boss's plans. One has to take in mind how impressive Solid Snake's skills are, being so young and already in his first infiltration mission which poses so much more of a challenge than the likes of his father, is also the fact that Outer Heaven is designed in a way that is not like any of the ordinary military base. Being this being Big Boss's fortress, it goes about saying that the way that it is designed is to keep people from sneaking and infiltrating from within and from outside. Within eras comes military advancements within technology, all within means of security and surveillance. Also including vicious dogs that are no doubt trained to kill. Solid Snake really had a lack of briefing before his mission, and even that of communication as his lead commander, Big Boss, was deceiving Solid Snake and was really misguiding him. Communication was limited on his mission and can be disrupted quite easily, adding to that element of uncertainty on Solid Snake's mission. Of course, Solid Snake would have to require allies after going through the facility and rescuing several people to uncover information that he needed in intelligence gathering to complete his mission. Unlike Big Boss, he didn't have much information to go on and was practically blindfolded and short-sighted in what he had to do to carry out his mission. Considering this is Solid Snake's first important stealth mission, this is truly impressive to know that he has to navigate around all these different obstacles whilst rescuing several people to uncover the truth behind his mission with no intel or weapons and having to procure everything on site. Outer Heaven outweighs any fortress and military complex known in the world. Of course, it's massively renowned throughout the Metal Gear franchise as several characters from within talk about the importance of this infiltration mission. Just like Big Boss, Solid Snake does get captured in Outer Heaven, where eventually, of course, he would escape. While Solid Snake did receive some support from Big Boss, there's no doubt that Big Boss didn't think it was possible that a young rookie like Solid Snake could accomplish such a mission at this level. And considering that Solid Snake was the junior of Grey Fox within the unit, would pull off a mission that even his superior couldn't do. In 1999, Solid Snake would face numerous challenges once again, whilst infiltrating the notorious Sanzibar land disturbance. Only this time with a lot more additional support from a bigger, wider radio intel team. Solid Snake couldn't have asked for a better radio team in terms of support of bringing down Big Boss's faction and Big Boss himself. With highly noticeable characters with military experience of their own such as Colonel Campbell, Master Miller, two men who have worked alongside Big Boss in his military escapades that would help Solid Snake understand the mindset of Big Boss, making his stealth infiltration mission way more smoother. And Snake would be provided with an anti-personnel sensor, being able to see dots within on the screen to pinpoint where his enemies are get him in the edge in stealth infiltration. Solid Snake would also receive radio support from Holly White. Holly White is an intelligence analyst and a member of the resistance group in Zanzibar land. She provides Snake with valuable information and assistance throughout his mission. Since she's an insider, it's super useful as she's already been in once before. She can tell Snake the fortress, its layout, and the locations of key items. She also aids Snake in deciphering various radio frequencies, allowing him to communicate with valuable Resistance members and gather critical information. Solid Snake is the ultimate opportunist taking advantage of any way that he can take cover in his stealth operation missions, including that of the ventilation ducts. Yes, while Zanzibar may not be as challenging as Outer Heaven, it still serves as a challenge having to sneak past sentries and find key items, but with the support of Holly White, 
finding such objects and weaponry and all different kinds of equipment just becomes a little bit more easier for Snake to complete his task with efficiency. Aside from mostly urban environments which Solid Snake is used to sneaking in, he's also proved that he's capable of sneaking in more jungle-like environments, given on the fact that Zanzibar is based in Africa. Even sneaking past the Green Berets, which are known for their special training in unconventional warfare, foreign internal defense, and direct action operations. Even traveling through dangerous swamplands, where the wrong step could land you at the very bottom of this pit. Solid Snake's level of adaptability is just like that of Big Boss. Solid Snake's maneuverability and agility is vastly improved. His evolution of his military prowess is clearly demonstrated here in Zanzibar. And having to get his hands dirty, literally, by swimming through an entire sewer system, a lot worse than what his father had to do in Operation Snake Eater, going past mines as he crawls past layers and layers of excrement. There is no room for error in this mission, with tight spaces and corners and sensory beams tracking your location if you get spotted, including the good old surveillance cameras that have made a return from outer heaven. All of this poses a real test for infiltration. And it looks like the cardboard box doesn't fall too far from the conveyor belt. Just like Big Boss, Solid Sneak would utilize the ability to hide in a box, jump with inside cargo trucks to transport himself around Zanzibar well as using conveyor belts. Solid Snake would have a vast array of people he could speak to on the Intel radio. Of course, one of those being Jacobson. Jacobson was a zoologist and an international authority on endangered species. Brilliantly enough, Solid Snake would encounter a Zanzibar owl, in which he would use that owl through means of intelligent stealth infiltration in order to access a part of the fortress that he needed to get through. One thing all this demonstrates about Solid Snake is that he's capable of living up to the legend, Big Boss, in terms of stealth infiltration missions and using his initiative to get past certain objectives, and using local wildlife to assist him, just like Big Boss would do in Operation Snake Eater. Without no doubts, of course Solid Snake would complete his mission with flying colors. But his first two infiltration missions being an absolute success, even with against all odds, always found a way to succeed. As usual, this is a one-man infiltration mission. Weapons and equipment, OSP. Yes, this is a top secret black op. Don't expect any official support. And by far, Solid Snake's most renowned mission of all time, the infiltration of Shadow Moses Island. The one thing that Solid Snake could master a lot better than Big Boss throughout his infiltration missions was to truly handle the mission solo. Yes, whilst at times Solid Snake did get support, he had to procure most of his weapons within the mission. Unlike Big Boss, which usually started most of his infiltrations with plenty of weapons and camo. And not to mention the fact that Big Boss also had a private military outfit that could supply him with ammunition and all kinds of equipment at any time he needed it. At this point, word has gone out from several people within Snake's radio unit and across people in the military world how much of a legendary mercenary at this point Solid Snake truly is. <laughs> nice to meet you, Snake. It's an honor to speak to a, a living legend like yourself. Noticeably, Solid Snake wears a specialized sneaking suit during his infiltration of Shadow Moses. The sneaking suit is designed to enhance Snake's stealth capabilities. The suit covers Snake's entire body, including his torso, arms, and legs. The full body coverage minimizes exposed skin, reducing the chances of being detected by thermal sensors and infrared cameras. The sneaking suit is made from advanced high-tech materials, offer both flexibility and durability, the material provides Snake a balance of protection and agility during stealth maneuvers. Solid Snake truly is a minimalist and does not need to be overcumbered with equipment. The stealth suit that he has is a perfect piece of equipment to protect him from the harsh environment that is Shadow Moses, which is hyperfermier type temperatures, which is perfect for his stealth infiltration. A sneaking suit working out. I'm nice and dry, but it's a little hard to move. Bear with it. It's designed to prevent hypothermia. This is Alaska, you know. Take it easy, I'm grateful. A lot of the soldiers that Solid Snake faces in Shadow Moses carries the genetic DNA of the legendary soldier, Big Boss, known as Genome Soldiers. These soldiers were genetically engineered to possess superior physical and combat abilities. Genome Soldiers exhibited enhanced strength, agility, reflexes, and combat skills. They were considered a formidable adversaries on the battlefield. Whilst they might have carried all the genetics of Big Boss, one thing they did lack was the experience and combat virtue of that of Big Boss. But one thing is for sure, they are one of the toughest patrols within the Metal Gear Solid franchise, with their quick wit and very sharp senses. That place is filled with gas. Also, the floor is electrified. First, destroy the high voltage switch. It's the switchboard on the northwest wall. But how? I can't reach it. Use a remote-controlled missile. 
Shadow Moses, like every other infiltration mission thus far, poses a difficult threat, such as the floor being electrified and also the place being full of gas. No, not that kind of gas, the gas that can kill you. One other thing that made Snake's infiltration mission very difficult was the fact that not everybody within the intel team that he had on the codec was necessarily reliable. The Campbell was taking orders from the likes of the higher executives that really just wanted to use Snake and then be done with him after he had completed his mission. Of course, he would meet other characters along the way such as Otacon, who would massively assist Snake within his mission, alongside Meryl and of course Grey Fox. Solid Snake's no stranger to petting doggos, being a musher himself, he used to have sled dogs. But of course, the wolves out here are wild and dangerous. But if you're really smart like the voice box, you've got a cardboard box at hand. And clearly you've got a good taste, because what other way to infiltrate a base than using a cardboard box? And with Shadow Moses being the third infiltration mission really shows how amazing he truly is for being considered the weakest genetic clone and defying the odds of his genetics. And just like his father, saving the world from all our potential nuclear fallout. All Solid Snake might not be as charismatic as Big Boss, there's one thing for certain, his tenacity and will to carry out a dangerous mission is respected worldwide. Try to avoid confrontations. Our goal is to collect evidence on Metal Gear development and expose it to the world. It would be best if you could get out of there without alerting anyone. Don't worry. I know the drill. We're not terrorists. Very good. Don't you forget that you're part of Philanthropy now, an anti-Metal Gear organization and officially recognized by the UN. Recognized, but still fringe, Otacon. The legendary hero Solid Snake would once again be tasked for a solo independent sneaking mission based around his own ideals of being part of Philanthropy. At this point, Solid Snake has definitely submitted his legacy as being one of the greatest stealth infiltration experts of his time. In means of infiltration intelligence gathering, infiltration rescue, and infiltration sabotage. Unlike Big Boss, who had a huge dependency on his military outfit as being a private military nation which would naturally draw too much attention in terms of remaining ghost and stealthy. Solid Snake impressively didn't rely on the fact that he had to use a number of soldiers to aid him on his mission, just his own small philanthropy group, such as Otacon and Natasha Romanico, which demonstrates Solid Snake's self-dependency on completing a high-ranking mission, without the means of much equipment or any kind of military backup or personnel. Out of all the previous missions that Solid Snake has encountered, the tanker is definitely not a challenge. Whilst the Gerlukovich soldiers are highly skilled and mercenaries, they wouldn't prove really that much of a difficulty for the likes of Solid Snake. The big difficulty with inside the tanker is the fact that it was very enclosed, it wasn't exactly spacious and there wasn't many hiding places, aside from lockers and cardboard boxes. At least from within. The men down here are definitely Marines. If the deck is sealed off, they have no way of knowing that the ship's been taken over. I'm not interested in fighting these guys. The weapons won't do me much good here. Can you see Metal Gear? No. I'll have to go around to the bow. They have some serious defenses here. I doubt the recent arrivals want to blast their way through the Marines either. Wonder where they're headed? I don't know. Not the beach, that's for sure. And how can we not mention one of the most impressive things within Solid Snake's solo sneaking infiltration missions is the very fact that he had to sneak against several armed guard Marines to provide proof and leak information of the new prototype of Metal Gear Ray, whilst also working under pressure without losing his composure to gather the evidence he needs for his mission. The Shadow Moses incident during the Sears administration. The current state of nuclear proliferation is a direct result of that event. There's definitely another intruder in here besides me. That's not a possibility. Not a team. Looks like a solo job. One man. We may not know who he is, but he managed to take care of every sentry in the area. They're all out cold. Whoever he is, he's got some skills. Solid Snake's appearance in the Big Shell was highly impressive. It means of using disguise and different tactics in order to disguise himself from the Patriots whilst infiltrating the Big Shell. 
Aside from the very beginning for sneaking through the oil fence and going all the way up the elevator, Snake also disguised himself as the US Navy SEALs to infiltrate further within the big shell. He uses the alias of Irigoy's Pliskin and wears a SEAL uniform to move for the facility without arousing too much suspicion. Once again, this mission wouldn't pose too much of a challenge for the likes of Snake as he's highly experienced within these kinds of missions, unlike Raiden. Of course, Solid Snake would assist Raiden within his mission, even means of defusing the bomb under a time limit while sneaking around the entire big shell. All of this whilst obtaining valuable information about the terrorists behind said incident within the big shell, all in means of great intelligence gathering and also whilst helping Otacon rescue the likes of hostages whilst remaining undetected. And most impressively, would also fake his death after the tanker incident by using the body of Liquid Snake. Adding to that extra layer of showing exactly why Solid Snake is a genius and can think ahead in order for him to infiltrate his mission, how could possibly Solid Snake be there if he's dead, truly is a mastermind behind techniques and skills in order to fool his enemies in order for infiltration. They said you were dead. No, not me. There are still too many things I need to do. What about, what about the DNA results from that body? That was Liquid's body. He and Snake are identical on the genetic level. Liquid? A deception for our own protection. Solid Snake's final mission. The entire world rests on the fate on this one man's military expertise. Who else would be capable for such an intense task? In the world of nanomachines where things are so much more highly advanced, stealth infiltration missions have never become any more challenging in a world consumed by battle. Already at the very beginning of Snake's task, Snake is faced with geckos, which walk on two legs which grants them with a high degree of mobility and maneuverability. Also, the gecko's limbs are equipped with sharp blade-like appendages. These limbs can be used for close quarters combat, slashing enemies with precision and speed, killing their enemies in one blow. Not just to mention that the geckos are also equipped with advanced sensor systems and targeting capabilities. These systems enable them to detect and track enemies, making them efficient hunters on the battlefield. And the battlefield consists of many problems and obstacles that Snake must face, not just man but machine alike. Also, what makes Solid Snake's mission very more impressive in Metal Gear Solid 4 is the fact that this guy has accelerated agent, but would still impressively perform at a high level in his stealth infiltration operations. In a good portion of Solid Snake's mission, he comes across PMCs, which are highly advanced within technical innovation of weaponry, and also the very fact that they carry cybergenetic enhancements, which give them strength, speed, and resilience, making augmented soldiers formidable in combat. Aside from the PMCs having great military experience and backgrounds, the PMCs are also fitted with nanomachines that make them work together as a unit and highly efficient, unlike any of our soldiers within the Metal Gear franchise. This data is monitored at HQ to enable command to make quicker, more precise, more rational decisions. It also enables crisis management for each individual soldier. It's being used by the US military, by state armies and allied countries, by PMCs, even police agencies are starting to adopt it. Unless they agree to implement the system, PMCs aren't permitted to send troops anywhere. You've got these system nanomachines and you too. Of course. Our unit plays by the rules, same as everybody else. And not only just would Solid Snake infiltrate the Middle East, it also find himself within South America, and that itself would bring itself a new selection of different kinds of problems. Given on being in the fact that it's a high altitude within the mountains, this would give the PMCs a whole different kind of edge within battle, heightening their senses even more. Good news is it's very highly populated in terms of foliage and trees, and there's plenty of hiding spaces to keep yourself hidden. Given on the fact that Snake isn't as young as he once was, his stress levels do get quite high, meaning that he gets agitated quite easily, which only affects his stamina gauge and also affects the very fact that he can't aim as accurately. A lot of times in Solid Snake's mission during the Guns of the Patriots, there's a lot of volatile and highly immense battles taking place, which serves as a whole set of difficulties to face, but at the same time makes it a great way to sneak past, as both the Rebels and the PMCs are keeping each other busy, making it easier for Snake to slip by. Government PMC troops have been operating at high altitudes. We have reports that it's starting to upset the balance of the nano-machine control system. Meaning? Meaning the low blood oxygen content seems to have an effect on their nano-machines, giving them a slight edge in battle. Be careful. Steer clear of altitude sickness. Got it. And of course, being the master of disguise just like Big Boss, Solid Sneak would also infiltrate Eastern Europe in means of way of changing his identity and in keeping his appearance hidden. 
through means of octo camo, which is the ultimate form of sneaking. It is the best sneaking suit that is arguably within Metal Gear Solid, as nearly any environment that you're around, the suit will change according to the pattern or color of the environment, giving the person who's wearing it an edge in battle and stealth infiltration missions to keep hidden. Octocamo is a newly developed camouflage technology that's capable of almost exactly mimicking the appearance of objects and surfaces. It's easy to use, too. All you have to do is press up against a wall or object, or lie flat on the ground while wearing the suit. It can be a powerful tool if you use it right. So tell me, how does it feel? Mm, not as itchy as I'd have thought. That suit can mimic the color, pattern, and even the surface texture of walls and floors. Kind of like procuring your own camo on site, right? I do just fine with the regular stuff. I'm not a chameleon. Throughout Eastern Europe, not only there just being specialized PMC troops, it's also that there's a fact there's armored vehicles around, and not to mention a helicopter with a surge spotlight. Even with the advanced sneaking suit such as Octocamo, the infiltration still poses a challenge. There isn't an environment that Solid Snake really can't navigate through, as once again he would find himself in the frozen, desolate wasteland of Shadow Moses, being subjected to the below freezing altitudes. Also, this time round, whilst there isn't any soldier patrols, it would be unmanned drones such as the humanoid dwarf gecko. They don't pose much of a threat in terms of combat, but in terms of self-infiltration detection, their infrared sensory awareness is unbelievable. To put it short, if you put yourself in their line of sight, they will detect you and they will swarm you within numbers. And furthermore, there is several gecko units that are hanging around and patrolling within Shadow Moses as well. All whilst Otacon needs to unlock the gate for Solid Snake, it poses a great challenge as Snake must hide and keep himself hidden whilst these patrols of Gecko sweep the entire area for any enemy threats. Unlike Big Boss who retired at a respectable age during Ground Zeroes, Solid Snake is physically a deteriorating character. Despite his advanced age that take the toll of combat of the years have taken on his body, Snake demonstrates remarkable resilience and determination throughout the infiltration. As noted through Guns of the Patriots, we can see throughout the several convulsions he has within the game, but it doesn't stop him from pushing himself to the point of almost certain death. Liquid has dispatched armor-enhanced troops from his personal army to that area. You do not want to get surrounded by them. Make sure they don't see you, or if you do engage, try and take them out one at a time. Finally, Solid Snake's most arguably difficult task within the Guns of the Patriots is to sneak through the newly formed Outer Heaven, which is swarmed with geckos, including the Frog Squadron, which are equipped with technologically advanced exoskeleton suits that enhance their physical abilities that includes increased speed and agility and strength, making them a very dangerous enemy to sneak past out of every single unit within the mission. The problem that this final mission poses is there is only one way with inside Outer Heaven that is completely covered and guarded by Gecko and the frogs alike. Solid Snake in total has served within 10 infiltration missions. That is a lot more than Big Boss, and each every single individual mission that he's had to undertake has not been without its challenges. Throughout Big Boss's and Solid Snake's stealth infiltration missions, they have faced some of the most challenging objectives with environments, weaponry, different soldier and enemy different types of combatants, within surveillance and AI technology, within both cybergenetics and nanomachines and robotronics, overcoming all odds with such possibilities of no success proves why these two are absolutely amazing at their craft within stealth infiltration. It goes about saying that both Big Boss and Solid Snake have had an incredible lineage when it comes to their sneaking missions. With their military experience and prowess, that does set them apart from each other, but at the same time, what makes them unique is the very fact that they don't have their own style in order to carry out such tasks. Big Boss sustains many injuries throughout his missions. The injuries occur when Snake falls off a bridge by the boss throwing him off. Specifically as a result from the fall from the bridge, Snake suffers from broken bones, with all kinds of lacerations and bruises. From the great height that Snake got thrown, luckily the water underneath was definitely deep enough to catch his fall. But falling from that height, anybody knows it's like hitting concrete when you hit the water. Aside from Big Boss having a great deal of endurance and willpower, 
A part of it also could be luck, because usually that kind of fall would have killed most people. And after all that, being exposed to a nuclear blast and all the radiation that it carries with it, as part from surviving the immense shockwave which carries a lot of heat, also explains why Big Boss is endurance is unbelievable. Of course, he'd already been irradiated once before in Bikini Atoll. Snake, you were an atomic test subject, weren't you? On Bikini Atoll. That's part of the reason I was drawn to you. You and I are alike. And it goes about saying that Big Boss's willpower is just unbelievably fascinating. The very fact that he can survive all these things and still keep pushing back, this time in Operation Sneak Eater, where the real mission truly begins. Failure was not an option within this mission. And after coming out of the ICU, the intensive care unit, the guy was clearly still shaken up, but was more than ready to fulfill his duty. Shortly after infiltrating Granin's lab, Snake would come across the fear, where he would be shot by a crossbow bolt, but not just no ordinary crossbow bolt. This one is coded in the venom of the Brazilian Wandering Spider. The venom of the Brazilian Wandering Spider is also a potent neurotoxin, which attacks multiple types of ion channels. It can cause paralysis, respiratory failure, and in extreme cases, even death. Aside from the agonizing pain of a bolt being stuck in your thigh, Big Boss must keep his wits and his awareness about him, just delaying his chances of recovery whilst the neurotoxin sets in. That bolt is coated in the venom of the Brazilian wandering spider. Soon, a most exquisite pain will engulf your entire body. Your limbs will be paralyzed, your lungs cease to draw breath. Eventually, your heart will stop beating. Ah, but what fun would that be? Not a beating at all. And what about the beating that Big Boss takes and all the injuries that he would sustain by the hands of Colonel Volgin? With a relentless amount of shots being taken to Snake's face, cutting and splitting him wide open, causing instant bruising and swelling. Whilst bearing in mind that Vulcan is electrically charged, he's an imposing figure, he's clearly larger and bigger, and you know that each strike that he is landing to Snake is causing extreme damage and fractures to his face. I said it once and I'll say it again, most people would not survive past the first punch. The amazing thing is that Big Boss still keeps on getting up and refuses to stay down. It's truly sickening how much of a beating that Big Boss had taken with blood visibly all over the floor, and for this absolutely devastating beating that he would receive, would eventually knock him completely unconscious. Ah! And undoubtedly why Big Boss's endurance is unlike anybody else's. Whilst being captured within size Groznygrad, Snaked Snake would be getting hit with several punches and blows, breaking and cracking and fracturing all kinds of different places on his body. And at the same time, being hit with massive electrical shocks with tons of voltage, 10 million volts to be exact. The human body can withstand as low as 42 volts, and even then people have died at that level of voltage. What's truly jaw-dropping is the very fact that Snake is being hit by 10 million volts per shot whilst taking that and surviving, and not giving any answers to Colonel Volgin, who wants to know exactly what Snake's objective is, refusing to break. This level of willpower and endurance goes without saying that Big Boss really is unmatched. This one goes without saying within the MGS community that this is most noticeably, this is the most notorious biggest test of Snake's endurance. By literally losing his eye, which is also one of Big Boss's test of pure willpower, as the very fact that throughout his mission, from then on, he'd have to use his only one eye to get through the entire objective of his mission, blindsiding him. This really does deepen the narrative of Big Boss's character, but what really makes him 
unique, and set apart from everybody else to show exactly why it is that he can do things that most people cannot. And with all of that, you had Ocelot jamming a transmitter straight into his back, as well as the boss shooting Snake in the leg. Snake, your right eye. <clears throat> the cornea and the lens are severely damaged and the eyeball is ruptured. So... So I can't heal it, even in the survival viewer. I'm afraid not. I'm sorry, Snake. I wish there was something I could do. Don't worry about it. I can still fight. Snake! And with Snake being chased and hunted down by the Ocelot unit, he would find himself having to jump out of the sewers down the waterfall which once again would knock him completely unconscious under the water whilst being dragged by the harsh currents of the river. The chances of survival in this situation are none. The snake sinks further into the depths, presumably he's been underwater for what seems like minutes. But miraculously, whilst being unconscious and dazed, he would somehow manage to hold his breath. Apart from when he wakes up, you can noticeably see that the water is starting to fill Snake's lungs, and at this point, it is vital that he got out of the river in the quick time that he did. <laughs> and with the death of the boss, his most beloved disciple, who was like a mother to Snake in many ways, this would really be a test of Big Boss's willpower out of everything else. Regardless of all the broken bones and fractures and scars and bruises that he takes, none of that would hurt as much as losing the person that he loved dearly. Half a Big Boss belonged to the boss, and when she died, a part of him died too. And the very fact that he was also deceived throughout his entire mission, knowing that his one objective was to kill the boss. Boss is something that would live on through his life, permanently scarring him, and making the decisions that he made that eventually led to his downfall as being Big Boss. The level of psychological damage this gave Big Boss outweighs all the physicalities that he had to undergo within his mission. She was a real hero. She was a true patriot. Since the day I killed the boss with my own hands, I was already dead. And even within Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker, Big Boss demonstrates remarkable endurance and willpower in various situations. Big Boss navigates through the dense jungles facing hostile environments and wildlife alike. It's also the very fact as well that he has the emotional resilience, coping with the emotional burden of losing the boss and believing that she is still alive. Whilst leading a mercenary group and making difficult decisions, his ability to shoulder the weight of command and continue fighting for his ideal showcases his mental toughness. Within building and leading military sans frontières, despite facing numerous challenges including limited resources and constant threats, Big Boss establishes and leads his organization. His commitment to creating a safe haven for soldiers demonstrates his visionary leadership and his level of enduring determination, including facing torture in the hands of Dr. Strangelove to find out Snake's motives for the reasons why he killed the legendary soldier, the boss. There's no doubt that his resilience has grown on him since Operation Snake Eater. You hate me. Fine. Turn it off. It doesn't change the fact that I killed her. Answer me! <clears throat> A lot of moments in Peace Walker collectively illustrate Big Boss's resilience both physically and mentally as he faces the challenges that would put the very fate of the world in complete disaster through the means of nuclear war. Even psychologically, emotionally speaking, being able to overcome the very fact that once again he'd be reunited with the boss, but in the most strangest way possible, by talking through a machine. A level of love and appreciation of the Metal Gear community for the events of Peace Walker can all put their interpretation and beliefs on what they truly believe what made Big Boss so determined and have an immense amount of willpower to continue his duties through such an intense mission.
With the disastrous events that took place in Ground Zero, such as the destruction of NSF, once again Big Boss would be challenged both mentally in terms of psychological damage of what this did to him, in terms of losing half of his military unit, having to witness his soldiers die as the base capsides and falls into the ocean beneath. His emotional self-control in situations like this shows his immense willpower, not to mention his physical strength too, by being able to take the blast that put him within a coma. It's very rare that anybody survives a helicopter crash. By being placed into this coma since 1975 to 1984 during the events of Phantom Pain, having to be resuscitated to be brought back round, but being stabilized to be thrown with inside the coma. But that's not the only time Big Boss would fall into a secondary coma during the events of Zanzibar. To be more precise, after Solid Snake would defeat Big Boss, the Patriots would then put Big Boss in an induced coma the entire time that lasted all the way through up until the guns of the Patriots, and he wouldn't wake up up until 2014. It's fair to say this guy got more done whilst being asleep than I have done being awake. You're lucky enough to somehow manage to put Big Boss down, but one thing you can't do is take him out. It's widely being demonstrated throughout the Metal Gear Solid franchise of the level of resilience, willpower, and endurance of Big Boss. Big Boss and Gray Fox, Frankie, were left near death. Zero recovered their bodies. Frank Yeager's entire body was reconstructed through surgery, and he was reborn as the cyborg ninja. Big Boss, now avenged became a prisoner of Zero even in death. Solid Snake, on the other hand, didn't have to go through as much physical torture than the likes of Big Boss. But one thing that he did face quite a lot of was a lot of willpower testing moments to test his psychological strength of all things. That's not to say that he didn't undergo a lot of physical challenges, but at the same time, in terms of comparing Big Boss alongside Solid Snake, it's clear to say that Big Boss really did take more of a beating within his missions. One of the biggest burdens that would really test Solid Snake's willpower is the very fact that he had to take out his own father, the very man that he respected greatly and who trained him. While Solid Snake might have been designed to be a weapon, he wasn't void without emotion, and still clearly, it affected him. We'll find out what kind of man you really are, when the pain becomes too great to bear. Just give up, and your suffering will end. I'm going to run a high-voltage electric current through your body. If it's just for a short time, it won't kill you. You're a tough guy, Snake. Solid Snake would find himself in a vulnerable position in Shadow Moses, being at the hands of the greatest torturer within the Metal Gear franchise, Ocelot, within both terms of psychological torment and been able to use different ways of trying to extract information out of most of his targets. The one person in particular that wouldn't fold and give up into the demands. Just like only Big Boss, Solid Snake would do the same. By keeping any information that was necessary to the success of the mission to himself. Showing but nothing but pure willpower and an immense resilience. Even whilst being electrified with thousands of volts worth of electricity coursing through his body. A strong man. Well, that's enough for now, I think. You're the boss's brother, all right. Solid Snake is a very careful military tactician. He doesn't seem to get himself in many situations where he ends up injured. He really is the ultimate strategizer and being able to think on his feet within critical moments. His clear intuition of knowing the dangers that lie ahead gives him that edge in battle to be able to avoid tough confrontations that could land him in the ICU. Solid Snake truly is the ultimate survivalist, but at the same time, he hasn't been through half as much as what Big Boss is in terms of physical endurance. But one can speculate if he really could take the level of physical punishment like Big Boss. To answer that question, I'd say yes. As Snake would progress through the corridor, he is bombarded with intense microwave radiation. And with levels of excruciating heat, his determination would really hold no bound. The microwave corridor scene is emotionally charged as it symbolizes Snake's final desperate push to complete his mission and save the world, despite his deteriorating health and the seemingly insurmountable obstacles in his path. 
It also demonstrates the level of willpower that Snake has, even going as far as willing to sacrifice himself. Going through this microwave corridor is practically certain death. Even when Solid Snake feels like giving up, he still continues to push through. That's something that doesn't come with military knowledge and abilities. That all comes down from having that warrior mentality, that unnatural sense of spirit to continue. You really don't need me to explain to you the level of endurance that Big Boss and Solid Snake carries. To determine really who has more, that's really all up to you. Throughout Big Boss's missions, he would face up to 23 bosses, starting with the Cobra unit. What makes the Cobra unit very spectacular is the very fact that they are the boss's personal combat unit that was assembled by herself in 1942. These elite soldiers, with their superhuman skills and abilities, each member of the Cobra unit has a distinct role and skill set, making this unit a very dangerous foe for Snake to overcome, which he eventually would. But of course, before he would fight the Cobra unit, he would be faced with the Ocelot unit. I, I see. Four of them. These are Ocelot's personal strike force, quite a force to be reckoned with. With their firearm proficiency, these units are skilled marksmen, proficient with a variety of firearms, as well as being able to have great coordination tactics to flush out the enemy. This would prove to be a very difficult task for the likes of Big Boss, having to take out the enemy whilst being surrounded by the entire Ocelot unit, making his escape quite difficult. Armed with automatic weapons and powerful shotguns, Big Boss has to use an array of tactics to completely outdo a squad that is strategically placed in the areas that would stop Snake from escaping. The Ocelot unit's name seems very fitting since these cats like to hunt their enemies down. Last. What's impressive about Ocelot is that he's only young and he's yet to hone his skills as we see later in the franchise. With his exceptional marksmanship skills, revolvers, and he can demonstrate precise and accurate shooting that he does all very effortlessly. The danger of Ocelot that he poses is the very fact that he embraces confrontation. He loves the competition. He displays agility, quick reflexes, enabling him to dodge attacks and move swiftly during encounters. This agility adds to the dynamic nature of his confrontations. And of course, his most notable skill is being able to ricochet bullets off different environmental objects. The tenacity and skill set of Ocelot up until this point and further on comes to demonstrate why Big Boss has to face quite a challenge, because this Ocelot is very relentless. Twelve shots. And the pain. Ha! I will guide you to a world of anguish beyond your imagination. Pain possesses unique and supernatural abilities that make him a dangerous adversary. With the pain's love for bees and honey, he has the ability to control and manipulate a massive swarm of hornets. He uses his power both defensively and offensively during the battle. The pain can also create a shield of hornets around him, making it difficult for Naked Snake to approach. He can also command the hornets to attack Snake, creating a relentless and overwhelming assault. All including his enhanced physical abilities, including strength and agility, he can perform acrobatic maneuvers and attacks with speed and precision. One of his special unique features, such as the Bullet Bee, that can practically fly through you at the speed of a bullet. Something that Big Boss would overcome, as he would use grenades in means of destroying the Hornets, as well as relentlessly attacking the Pain, who would only get stronger throughout the second stage of the fight. Boss really has no supernatural abilities, he's just that damn good. It makes the Pain look like an ordinary person. Yes, whilst he gets the title, the Pain, 
Big Boss certainly knows how to bring the pain. The pain! The pain! I am the fear. Fear amongst the Cobra unit is far by one of the strongest out of them all. He definitely has the abilities that make him stand out from the crowd, including the abilities to go practically near invisible when he hops from tree to tree, hitting you with random crossbow bolts, not knowing exactly what direction they're coming from. All of different varieties such as explosive bolts and poison bolts alike, and being double jointed, been able to snap his bones out of place in order for him to move around like a spider. Just like most bosses big boss would fight, he would always find a way to exploit their weaknesses. The problem with the fear is that his camo weakens his stamina, so he needs to find food on a regular basis. Boss would utilize his environment around him by using poison animals for the likes of the fear to feast on. So no need to fear, Big Boss is here. I see it! The fear! I am the end. The end is considered one of the greatest snipers in the world. He has unparalleled skill in long range marksmanship and can accurately hit targets from great distances. Being the master of camouflage, he blends with his surroundings using a ghillie suit, making him nearly invisible in the dense forest. Also, he has a parrot companion that assists him in tracking Snake's movements. He's the eldest elite ally within the Cobra unit. But he isn't without his weaknesses, Big Boss being the mastermind behind being able to take him out within several ways, demonstrating even further why Big Boss's skills within combat and defeating bosses is all the more impressive. I am the Fury! The flames of my rage will incinerate you. The Fury, burning with the fires of flames directly from hell. His level of range combined with his flamethrower, not to mention his thrusters on his jetpack, make him a very dangerous opponent that could almost have you being burned alive. Visibility is very poor, but the master big boss with the skills and knowledge that he knows realizes he can exploit the Fury's rage and anger that can make him wide open for attack. The Fury may be burning with rage, but Big Boss is burning with desire to overcome any challenge. This is the end of the Copras. You've got to live on. You're the only one left. I'm off. To join the Sorrow. <laughs> And the supernatural being, former member of the Cobra unit, the Sorrow. How can you kill what is already dead? With Big Boss being between limbo, between death and life. This fight is more of a test of psychology more than it is physical, as the Sorrow would remind Snake of all those whose lives he'd ended within the battle throughout the entirety of Operation Snake Eater. Big Boss would walk within the Valley of Death, uncertain of his fate. The scary thought is, if this was anybody else other than Big Boss, chances are nobody would come out of this one alive. Big Boss would live to tell the tale for another day, as the sorrow would free Snake back to his world. It's just you and me now. And I'm gonna enjoy this. Colonel Volgin, aka Thunderbolt. This guy gets his sick, twisted frills out of his cruelty and sadistic nature in taking fun and pleasure out of fighting his opponents. He is charged with electricity, making every blow and punch that he uses devastating. With massive electrical charge attacks, also been able to fire bullets from his electrical charge shots. He certainly is an opposing figure, but yet again, not without his weaknesses. In terms of his armory, he is a deadly force to be reckoned with. But in close quarters combat, he is no match with the likes of Big Boss, who would take him out with ease. Snake even showcases the fact that he doesn't even need to use his gun or his knife, putting them away. Showing an amazing amount of resilience and courage, Big Boss really did have a score to settle with the likes of Colonel Volgin. 
Impressively, Colonel Volgin also has the ability to use a force field like electrical generated shield, but he could be easily massively overwhelmed by the likes of Big Boss's close quarters combat. <laughs> Jagohot, the first Metal Gear that Snake would face in battle, loaded with cannons and machine guns and miniguns. Also, the fact that he could launch missiles directly from above it, this weapon is truly the ultimate battle tank, in all situations is not designed for a human to take out. Of course, it goes about saying that Snake would get assistance from Eva, driving the bike around the wounded Jagohot. The very fact that a mortal man such as Big Boss could take on this big piece of machinery that is not designed for humans to take out would only just further demonstrate the level of skill and tenacity within the levels of Big Boss's combat skills. It wasn't the most difficult Metal Gear, but it definitely had a great deal of armor, but it lacked the mobility of being bipedal, therefore not making it the most challenging Metal Gear out of the rest. Fried by a bolt of lightning. A fitting end. Let's make this the greatest ten minutes of our lives, Jack. Boss. You're a soldier. Finish your mission. Prove your loyalty. This would be the hardest combat mission that Big Boss would eventually have to face. Throughout all his mission in Operation Snake Eater, eventually at this point, he would have to fight the boss. The greatest soldier of our generation. The very one woman that would teach Snake a lot of what he knows he would finally have to face up to the very person that he loved dearly. Taking the life of the boss comes with more than just the challenges of having to face her within battle. It's the emotional aspect and the narrative-driven story of the impact that it would have on Big Boss's mentality. With only a time limit of 10 minutes on the clock before the place is blown to smithereens, Big Boss is faced with no option but to defeat the very one person that meant the entire world to him. And in doing so, by defeating the legendary hero, the boss, he would then claim the title of being that even above the boss by becoming the legend we all know as Big Boss. One thing that a lot of people speculate within the Metal Gear Solid community is if the boss actually allowed Snake to win, knowing that he must fulfill his mission to save the world, making this contest of combat really uncertain. With this emotionally gripping narrative, it would only explain how Big Boss's combat experience was so great. anti-snake and i'm the one man who can break you during portable ops in the san Jeronimo incident big boss would come across his former fox unit starting with his former ally python that served time back in the war together python was superb as a marksman especially with assault rifles due to the nature of his suit it was also difficult to engage in hand-to-hand -hand combat making cqc useless all for the very fact that his suit contained liquid nitrogen making him cold to the touch Amazing, Snake. I can see why. The CIA was afraid of you. That Metal Gear may be only an incomplete prototype, but dear Ursula more than makes up for its shortcomings. <laughs> up next, Big Boss would face Metal Gear Raxer, by far the weakest Metal Gear within the franchise, as it was only a prototype and had to be manned by the likes of Alicia. The mobility on this thing was absolutely terrible. The only way I could describe it is like a newborn chick that's just been born that can't stand steady on its legs. But it was quite ferocious from up front, firing missiles from its arms and being able to use its minigun. And it's fair to say that in this fight, Big Boss's resilience is highly impressive, taking missile blows. But it wouldn't pose too much as a threat as once again, Big Boss would eliminate this with ease. 
Elisa, get out of there! I am Null, and when you're dead, I can go back to being Null. The renowned legendary Grey Fox, the perfect soldier, made for one purpose, battle. Aside from his noticeable immense skills and abilities, at this stage Grey Fox wasn't at his strongest as he was yet to become the cyborg ninja that Solid Snake would face. But would still pose a serious threat, as with his super skills and enhanced abilities such as speed and agility, and pinpoint accuracy every single attack he makes, making CQC a difficult choice of weapon with facing him in battle. This gameplay doesn't emphasize really, truly on how amazing Grey Fox is within combat, because without a doubt, throughout all the bosses in the franchise, he is definitely up there as being one of the best. I, I remember now, Big Boss. Even then, you were the one who stopped me. Cunningham. Glad you can make it, Snake. To be honest, I'm a bit surprised. You've come much further than I'd expect. And there's Cunningham. Despite him possessing an artificial leg, possessed a tremendous amount of physical strength, evidenced by preparing to fire the Davy Crockett by hand. As the Davy Crockett is a nuclear miniature shell, which for most ordinary people requires a tripod to use. Big Boss has to combat Cunningham while evading his big giant hovercraft, which has machine guns, and he also has the ability to throw mines that are electrified, making it very difficult to navigate on this small platform elevator. The CIA know the level of strength that Big Boss carries for the likes of CQC, hence why all the bosses Big Boss faces make CQC irrelevant. But would demonstrate the level of combat skills as Big Boss manipulates to wield a big LMG whilst maintaining accuracy and avoiding recoil. I've taken you with me! Cutting him, no! Ha 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 ha! I, too, have a reason to fight you. To prove who I really am. Let's find out who the true successor is, Snake. Let's finish this. In Portable Ops, Jeans is a significant character with unique skills and abilities. Aside from his great leadership skills and charismatic tendencies, to be able to control people through mind control, enabling him to manipulate the thoughts and actions of others. With the level of mental fortitude that Big Boss contains, trying to manipulate his mind just won't happen. As a formidable combatant, Gene has skills in close quarters combat. This includes hand-to-hand -hand combat techniques that he uses with melee weapons such as a knife. Being able to surprise attack by throwing knives out from his coat and throwing them in rapid succession. With Big Boss having amazing evasive skills and sharp reflexes, is too quick and sharp for the likes of Gene. With several abilities, Gene can also move and teleport out of the way. But once again, even with all these skills, would it be enough to take down the legendary Big Boss? I don't believe it. A product of the successor project. Beaten by a flesh and blood man like you. It seems you are the true successor of the boss. Looks like there's no way around him. You up for this, Snake? The events of Peace Walker, Big Boss is tasked to fight several bosses, but bosses that are not really human, but are more machine, especially when it comes to armored vehicles and different assorts. So not only does Big Boss have to worry about the armored vehicle, he has to worry about several deployed units that come out from the vehicle, even additional backup units. This becomes very challenging for the likes of Big Boss, as if he does not take out the soldiers first, you can quite easily become overwhelmed by enemy units that surround you. In the means of guerrilla warfare, Big Boss is tasked to be a multitasker. He has several objectives to do. Not only just taking out the armored vehicle, but also taking out the captain that is with inside the vehicle. Within Peace Walker, the means of fighting heavy weaponry is amplified, and making battle situations quite noticeably unfair. But if anything that is impressive, Big Boss is capable of taking armored units and armored vehicles by himself. There is a reason why he gets the codename Naked Snake. He can take out big armored vehicles even while wearing cool battle uniform if he really must. But once again, same as before, he must take on several armed armored units 
whilst also facing a tank, but this isn't no ordinary tank. This is the T-72U. What makes this tank a very dangerous opponent is the very fact that it has a multiple charge shot to fire several cannon shots at you. The good news is that the fuel compartment is at the back of the very tank. If you can get behind it and hit that, you're bound to do an immense amount of damage. With means of great cover and keeping away from the cannon, this is obviously a challenge that Big Boss would pass with flying colors. Enemy leader neutralized. Mission complete. Take him out! The heavily fortified Pupa is an armored tank that is based around the designs of the Shagohod. The impressive thing about this vehicle it is, aside from its jet thrusters which moves at a quick speed, you really don't want to be in the way of that attack. And also it carries several big machine guns surrounding its entire chassis. Inside this arena there is practically nowhere to take cover, aside from hiding and edging towards the walls is pretty much the only source of cover. Big Boss also must keep his eye out for an incoming attack which could come from any direction within the arena since there are several tunnels from which the pupa can arrive from, including doing jump attacks. The pupa also has an array of special electrical mines that it uses to place all over the floor, giving you a bit of a time limit in order to try and take as many out as you can. It's definitely not the hardest Metal Gear that Snake has to face in terms of all the Metal Gears in Peace Walker, but it definitely serves as quite a bit of a challenge. Soviet pilots call the Mi-24 the flying tank. Most Mi-24s feature a 12.7mm Yak B minigun in a chain turret, while some have a very powerful two-barrel 30mm GSH-30K autocannon strutted along the right side of the cockpit. The inner pylons are used to carry unguided rockets such as the 57mm S5 and 80mm SA gun pods such as a UPK-23 and a variety of free-fall bombs. So yup, this helicopter poses quite a challenge. The good news is though it's not without its weaknesses just like every other boss. The very fact that Big Boss is inside a jungle environment makes this helicopter have a hard time trying to land on target since there's plenty of trees and foliage to hide behind. There's also plenty of space within inside this helicopter with several backup units that can rappel down and try and hunt for Snake really making multitasking a difficult thing to do. The leader's down. It's over. The Chrysalis Metal Gear, the first airborne Metal Gear that can take off and fly. This thing has an, a big massive giant railgun that can fire electrical charge shots and a huge massive chain gun that is absolutely relentless with also the ability as well to teleport to different sections, making it harder to hit, alongside his kidnapper drones that can lift you up and drop you from great heights. But with Big Boss's level of accuracy, this thing will eventually land and be grounded. The Cocoon is definitely one of the most sloppiest within terms of design. It is heavily fortified with weapons from top to bottom. The only issue that it has is that it has no weapons from underneath. Making taking cover quite easy as you can hide practically underneath this vehicle. Armed with missile launchers and a big giant main cannon, also a sweeping chainsaw that can rotate around its entire structure, including missile bombs that it can fire from above. One of the things that makes this very challenging for Big Boss is that he has to climb the structure of this Metal Gear, whilst avoiding every piece of weaponry that is above, including big giant miniguns. Unlike previous Metal Gears in Peace Walker, where you can normally just climb straight in with the AI pod, this one is a lot more difficult to access. It's calculating ballistic trajectory. Once that's finished, it's all over. Snake, you've got to destroy the platform. And by far the most challenging Metal Gear in Peace Walker, it's Peace Walker itself. Out of the entire Metal Gear units, this one is practically the most dangerous. 
This four-legged Metal Gear has the ability to launch nukes, and within that time, Snake must distract the Metal Gear just enough to stop it from launching a nuke and practically putting the world through nuclear Armageddon. This boss is powered by the very AI that is controlled by the personality of the boss herself. Loaded with missile launchers and drill missiles, and the ability to be able to run with on its four legs, been able to run at quick speeds, charging and dashing. And most noticeably about Peace Walker is the very fact that it has its advanced defensive systems, including high armor plating, and anti-aircraft weaponry. One can't stress enough how much damage this thing takes. But what makes Big Boss's combat at level is so impressive for the very fact that he has so much strength that he has the ability to lift and throw his huge giant metal gear completely off his feet. that's not impressive, then I don't know what is. But one thing is for certain, this is definitely one of the hardest Metal Gears that Big Boss has ever fought, period. Because even after defeating Peace Walker, this thing was still moving and going, ready and willing to launch a nuclear bomb. It's only the very fact that the boss's personality was controlling the AI that met this vehicle drown itself. Boss, is that you? How in the... Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker would be Big Boss's final combat mission against fighting any bosses. The final boss being Metal Gear Zeke, which is a Metal Gear that was designed in MSF, designed from all the parts and components of all the previous Metal Gears that Snake has fought within Peace Walker. One can notice how massively this looks like Metal Gear Rex from MGS1. This thing is now bipedal. Whilst it doesn't have a massive array of weaponry unlike the Metal Gears before, is a lot more agile, it's more lightweight, versatile. Zeke still poses as a massive threat, as it still has nuclear launching capabilities. Big Boss wouldn't permanently destroy Zeke, it only put it out of commission. The danger that Zeke poses too is that it's not AI controlled, this thing is manned, making whoever is controlling this thing have more precise actions towards their target. You never thought I'd be into machines, huh? Solid Snake has faced up to 40 bosses throughout his combat missions, including to start things off with the mercenaries in Outer Heaven, which is several big bosses hand-picked mercenaries that he defeats all by himself just with a handgun. In Outer Heaven, Shotmaker guarded the cell holding Foxhound agent Grey Fox. Solid Snake had been detained and lost all of his equipment. Within this battle being shot at by the Shotmaker, Solid Snake had to retrieve all his equipment. What makes Shotmaker very unique is the fact he was a Spetsnaz operative during the time of the Soviet Union. His time with the Spetsnaz allowed him to hone his technique using the riot gun. He was able to use powerful weapons to his advantage and became known for his skill wielding it. Impressively, Solid Snake would beat Shotmaker, dodging several shotgun bullet attacks. Solid Snake would be successful taking out one of Big Boss's units. Machine Gun Kid was a former member of the SAS, the Special Forces Unit of the British Army, eventually left to become a mercenary for hire and was later contracted by the private military company Outer Heaven. He would wield machine guns to the point of mastery, earning him his nickname. Of course, during this time, he wouldn't allow Snake to pass through. Despite his impressive skills of his machine guns, Snake was able to use the room's large wolf fixtures as cover from his fire, ultimately killing him. And just like his father Big Boss would also face a Hind D, yes, a Soviet helicopter. Being shot at with several bullets, Solid Snake also would have to use the likes of his grenade launcher in order to take out the Hind D, of course being successful. <laughs> Solid Snake would also have to face a tank too, with several machine guns and a cannon alike. Solid Snake didn't really have much in terms of equipment aside from his grenade launcher and mines, and which he could use to place whilst he runs back into cover, demonstrating his absolute level of skill since his first mission, undertaking tasks such as fighting tanks and helicopters already. A large armored bulldozer tank hybrid utilized by the mercenary nation of Outer Heaven, it was utilized to eliminate intruders and presumably for the use in construction and combat. Of course, Solid Snake would defeat this tank with grenades. He seems to have quite a form for destroying tanks with grenades. Biotrooper mastered his weapon of choice, the flamethrower, training himself to handle it effortlessly as a rifle. Originally being a member of the German counter-terrorism unit, would be a hired mercenary for Big Boss. Firetrooper would force Snake to battle him, threatening to burn him to a crisp. However, despite the advantage of an even battlefield with no cover in sight, 
Snake was able to take advantage of Fire Trooper's relative lack of bodily protection and eliminated him. In Outer Heaven, there was two cyborg units, known as the Bloody Brads, equipped with an artificial intelligence capable of autonomous combat. While Snake encountered the Bloody Brad units, Resistance member Diane told Snake to flee because she believed they were indestructible. Of course, the units were vulnerable to attack from a rocket launcher. Snake was provided an RGP-7 by an undercover Resistance member. He then fought against them and destroyed both Bloody Brad units with ease. <laughs> By far one of Solid Snake's strangest missions, Duck fought against Foxhound operative Solid Snake using these POWs as human shields, which included Jennifer's brother. He dared Snake to try and shoot him while attacking with his lethal boomerangs. Yes, this guy uses boomerangs. In addition to the area's floor was rigged with a pit trap, just in case Snake attempted to close in on Duck. However, Snake found an opening against Duck's attacks and killed him without harming the POWs. Oh bloody hell, I hit myself in the face with a boomerang! Solid Snake's first Metal Gear he would encounter is a TX-55. It was armed with two millimeter machine guns, a laser cannon, multiple medium-range warheads. However, none of its arsenal was put to use as a TX-55 was destroyed by Solid Snake before its completion by plastic explosives over its feet when the armor was at its weakest. So far, it's definitely not the toughest Metal Gear that Snake has fought thus far but that would only change later in the years. Now we have Big Boss, or should I say, The Phantom. Yes, Venom Snake. Thank you, my friend. From here on out. Oh, Big Boss. The very boss in which Solid Snake would have to face at the end of Operation Intrude. Ultimate Master of Deception would take the role of Big Boss, even being given the honors by Big Boss himself to carry such a title. And he goes about saying for the lineage of all the missions he's done, especially in Phantom Pain, he is renowned. And we know that his skills are just like that of Big Boss's. Talking about Solid Snake, brilliant soldier with not much combat experience out there within the field, and being able to take on legendary mercenaries such as Venom Snake. Some will argue in the Metal Gear community that Venom Snake wasn't in his prime at the time, so therefore Snake gets the advantage, but one can't question the level of skill that this must take. So now we face Dr. Marv. Just joking, it's actually Kyle Schneider, who assisted Solid Snake on his former mission, Outer Heaven, being somewhat of a navigator. Only this time now he's the Black Ninja, and yes, he is definitely one of Solid Snake's most toughest opponents. Throwing several ninja stars and being able to move extremely quick, of course Solid Snake would kill this guy. A visitor! What a pleasant surprise! I was about to go for a little run! I'm Running Man, the world's fastest mercenary! No one can keep up with me! See for yourself! Well... What do you think? Pretty fast, huh? But I'm just getting warmed up. Ah, uh, it doesn't get any more eccentric in Metal Gear with the bosses, but that's what's lovable about it. During the Barcelona Olympics, in which this guy ran a 100 meter dash within 9.6 seconds, his athletic career was put to an end when he was caught doping and using steroids, so he decided to become a mercenary afterwards. Of course, it goes without saying he's the running man, so he likes running, which is perfect for Snake, as Snake could place mines in his paths whilst being chased by the running man. It's not all as great as it sounds, as running man would release nerve gas throughout the building, and that would challenge Snake to beat him before succumbing to the gas. Whilst the running man was dying on his deathbed, he wondered how the cheetah could have lost to the snake. Snake simply replied that he wasn't fast enough. <laughs> Poor savage. Wrecked. Absolutely taken down. And once again, Snake would face the Hind D, the beloved helicopter. Only this time, this helicopter isn't stationary. Snake would have to use a rocket launcher to put this bird down. Red Blaster was an elite assassin. He wouldn't serve as an explosives expert for the Spetsnaz. His main fighting style involved laying a trap using tripwires and then throwing his RKG free anti-tank grenades at his target. Solid Snake fought Red Blaster as he was ambushed as Snake easily left the elevator with wire traps all over the room. These traps restricted his movements, leaving him open to attack by the Blaster's grenades. However, Snake was able to outsmart him and in a twist of irony defeated him using the same weapon type. And definitely one of the most hardest challenges within Solid Snake's combat missions. The four horsemen were an assassination squad employed by the Zanzibar land that are specialized in close quarters combat. They were named after the four biblical figures in the Book of the Revelation known as the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse. 
These were definitely a unit not to be messed with. They were comprised of former elite members of the SAS, the GCG-9 and the UDT. They utilised their combined skills for confined spaces, which would definitely make Solid Snake's life very difficult as he is stuck with inside the elevator whilst there is people firing machine gun bullets at him. There is evidently no cover, Snake just simply has to rely on his quick movement to be able to avoid all the enemy bullets which are coming from every direction. This just clearly demonstrates exactly how much of a badass Solid Snake is. <laughs> Jungle Evil was once an operative of the South African Special Forces Brigade. Before that, he served as a mercenary in the Vietnam War and Southern Yemen. During this time as a mercenary, he single-handedly destroyed two entire troop companies, causing him to be viewed as being more of a beast than a human being, being absolutely advanced in guerrilla ambushing techniques. Solid Snake would have to rely on his wits and his quick reflexes in order to look out for these surprise attacks, making him quite a formidable challenge. Of course, Solid Snake would defeat another member of Zanzibar. Night Fright was a Zanzibar land mercenary who specialised in guerrilla warfare. His weapon of choice was a Chinese-made Type 67 silenced pistol, and he also made use of an optic camouflage suit, stealth camo, that rendered him invisible. Night Fright was the last surviving member of a group called The Whispers, a legendary guerrilla squad from North Vietnam who was portrayed to be more skilled at jungle guerrilla warfare than even the Green Berets. However, despite the fact that Snake couldn't see Night Fright, he was able to use his sense of hearing to locate and eventually beat his opponent. Drago Petrovic Madna was a Russian robotics engineer responsible for the creation of the TX-55 Metal Gear prototype and its successor, Metal Gear D, in Zanzibia land. Once again, one of the most strangest combat missions that Snake must undergo because Dr. Madna was attempting to try and strangle him from behind. Of course, however, Snake would eventually break free and easily defeat him, but this comes to show that Dr. Madna has quite a lot of strength because he held Snake within his grip for quite some time. But definitely wasn't Solid Snake's hardest challenge, probably the most easiest boss he's faced. <laughs> Metal Gear D standard arsenal was comprised of a 60mm rotary cannon and a 5.6mm machine gun and a 6 missile pod that could be armed with several different types of warhead. Whilst its main purpose was to serve as a mobile launch platform for short to medium range nuclear warheads, it could also function as a weapon of conventional warfare. This would be Solid Snake's second Metal Gear that he'd have to face, only this time it was piloted by the legendary soldier, Grey Fox. Of course, these two would ensue in battle, with Solid Snake having to once again use grenades to destroy Metal Gear D. Very impressive considering that most Metal Gears that big bosses fought thus far, he had a mass amount of weaponry of what he could use. But once again, Solid Snake being victorious within this battle. Big Boss's Lieutenant, the perfect soldier Grey Fox, the man who's been decorated several times for being one of the greatest soldiers of all time. Only this time he has honed his skills all that much more after serving with Big Boss. As prior before, Big Boss had fought with the likes of Grey Fox, but he definitely wasn't advanced as he was here, right now fighting against Solid Snake in an impressive hand-to-hand -hand combat battle, and obviously where Solid Snake once again would come through, beating one of his former allies in battle through means of pure hand-to-hand. -hand. <laughs> Solid Snake would have to fight his father for the first time within combat, and if you've seen all what this video has had to show you so far, you can understand the level of skills that both of these men will carry. The one thing that is for certain though, that Big Boss's honour is practically none, as he doesn't even give Solid Snake a chance to use a weapon to fight against him. And the practicality of using CQC is not even there for Big Boss, he decides to still chase Snake down whilst using a weapon, instead of giving him a fair fight, would cowardly fight Snake using his machine gun in order to beat him. But being the brave soldier and noble warrior that Solid Snake is, would search the facility and means of a weapon to defeat Big Boss, quite naturally. Big Boss even admitted himself that he makes mistakes from time to time, and one of those mistakes was actually not fighting Snake within a hand-to-hand -hand combat situation, because chances are, he most likely would have won a confrontation in the means of CQC. There is no doubt that Big Boss's mind is clouded by his poor judgement, unlike Solid Snake who has good understanding and reasoning to be able to think clear and straight. Eventually Solid Snake would manage to get his hand on a flamethrower, or a makeshift one should we say, using a deodorant can. Solid Snake had defeated Big Boss, but whilst he was down, he definitely wasn't out. 
One thing's for certain that Solid Snake's innovative thinking skills is the reason why he's above and beyond. But one can question, what would these two really be like in a fight whilst absolutely being in their primes? Well, that's up for you to decide. Revolver Ocelot. I've been waiting for you, Solid Snake. Now we'll see if the man can live up to the legend. And just like Big Boss, Solid Snake had definitely submitted himself as being living up to the legend. The very fact that he faces Ocelot for the first time ever, but only this time once again, just like all the other previous bosses Big Boss has fought, they have all honed their skills and become dramatically a lot better than they was beforehand. With knowledge comes wisdom, and with wisdom comes knowledge. They both go hand in hand. Therefore, this is what makes Ocelot a more dangerous opponent in terms of Solid Snake's fight. With Solid Snake chasing Ocelot down would stop him from being able to fire his gun off the walls, as taking cover is practically useless in this case. It means applying pressure by relentlessly chasing after Ocelot. Therefore, when he has to reload, gives Snake the chance to either use combat within hand-to-hand -hand or use his gun. No, let's fight. Member of the Foxhound unit, Raven, would be an enemy that would test Solid Snake's combat skills. Once again, Solid Snake using nothing but grenades in order to beat Raven. Vulcan Raven has some noticeable attributes, especially towards Solid Snake's second encounter. He is just as you said. In battle, he is as if possessed by a demon. After defeating Raven within the tank, Solid Snake would encounter Raven again for the second time. Noticeably, Vulcan Raven is a massive and physically imposing character, serving as a tank operator with the enhanced group known as Foxhound. In this section, Solid Snake must keep his distance from Vulcan, who is carrying an M61 powerful rapid-firing minigun and a big metal drum that is full of bullets that he tries to empty out onto Solid Snake's face. Being the legendary soldier through consistently moving and taking cover behind containers and hiding and taking his shots very carefully would defeat Raven after a seemingly challenging duel. Snake. You're that ninja. I've been waiting for you, Snake. Who are you? Neither enemy nor friend. And by far Solid Snake's most challenging objective within Shadow Moses was to face his former friend, Grey Fox, within battle. This time, Grey Fox is enhanced with cybergenetic ability. Grey Fox at this point is as strongest as he's ever been. This would make Solid Snake have a very difficult task in trying to face him. It means of using all different kinds of equipment in ways to put him out. Even using hand-to-hand -hand combat shows exactly how skilled Solid Snake is. Even without cybergenic enhancements, Grey Fox was always skilled and had immense combat abilities. But now that he's fitted with the exoskeleton, it makes him near enough impossible to beat. The only one man really I believe who could have beat him at this level is definitely Solid Snake, and that's what makes him very unique. I'm Psycho Mantis. That's right. This is no trick. It's true power. Another member of the Foxhound unit, Psycho Mantis. This guy is supernatural and otherworldly. It's impressive how Solid Snake can maintain his willpower and combat excellence through not letting him read his mind. Yes, Psycho Mantis can also manipulate the environment around him using different objects controlling them with his mind through psychokinesis and telekinesis. While Psycho Mantis may be able to see the thoughts of Solid Snake, one thing he can't do is control him. Usually anybody else who's around Psycho Mantis, he has the ability to pretty much possess them like a demon. In terms of fighting supernatural beings, Big Boss has fought many more, especially throughout his years in Operation Snake Eater against the Cobra unit. If one thing's for certain, both Big Boss and Solid Snake do represent the meaning of mental fortitude. My brother! Why are you calling me brother? Who the hell are you? I'm you! I'm your shadow! What? Ask the father that you killed! I'll send you to hell to beat him! Throughout Solid Snake's career, he's fought up to three Hind Ds now. The difference being that Liquid is the one who is piloting this Hind D. Aside from him being massively skilled in combat experience, just like Snake through different means, he is also the master of being able to fly aircrafts, even taking down two F-16 aircrafts. Impressively, Solid Snake would be victorious in means of defeating Liquid by using the Stinger missile, required piece of equipment that he definitely needed against Liquid, who was a master of flying such vehicles. Well, I'm 
going to send you a love letter, my dear. Do you know what that is? It's a bullet straight from my gun to your heart. Please, Wolf! Snake, no! Quiet! Don't get in our way! Now I'm gonna pay you back for Meryl. Sniper Wolf, debatably the best sniper that ever lived. Wolf was rescued from our harsh upbringing by Big Boss who raised her as a soldier. She has combat experience from the best. What makes Sniper Wolf incredible is the very fact that she's a sharpshooter capable of waiting for her targets for days, even weeks without eating or moving. She carries the noticeable PSG-1, in which she would use mercury bullets to poison her victims. And with her being loaded out on diazepam, she didn't have one single shake in her, making her a complete accurate shot against her enemies. Impressively, Solid Snake would defeat Sniper Wolf, who practically lives and dies by the sniper. Snake has had previous experience, but not on the level of Sniper Wolf, further demonstrating his skills as been an expert marksmanship sniperer. It was waiting for someone to kill me. A man like you. You're a hero. Please, set me free. Look out, Snake! The guys who stole my stealth prototypes are in there with you! Too late, Snake! Now die! We also have the encounters with the Genome Soldiers, which we can't forget, as got the DNA of the legendary hero, Big Boss, which gives them that edge in battle. Solid Snake has been for this encounter before with the Four Horsemen, only difference being that they wasn't armed with stealth camel, making them nearly invisible. When it comes to fighting within tight spaces, Solid Snake is a guy you definitely don't want to mess with. Practically nearly every encounter with a genome soldier that forcibly enters an alert is practically considered a big fight on Snake's hands. Rex was the ultimate Metal Gear, as it was not only capable of delivering a nuclear weapon both to and from any point on the globe, it could do so undetectably and untraceably. All previous Metal Gears were Mii mobile ground-based launch systems for nuclear missiles, little more than Lanta-based equivalent of ballistic missile submarines. Rex utilized a railgun, which fired much smaller projectiles without chemical propellants that contained stealth technology, factors which made them virtually invisible to radar. Metal Gear Solid Rex is the basis of all Metal Gears, as Granin intended for this to be the ultimate Metal Gear would finally come to fruition within Shadow Moses. The brilliance of this is that helps Snake out in his mission is the very fact that Otacon decided to have weak spots, because this thing could have been nearly indestructible, even Stinger missiles wasn't enough to take it down. It was the very fact that Grey Fox assisted Snake to further destroy the radome to open the cockpit for Snake to get shots in on Liquid. This Metal Gear is truly fearsome, and throughout all the other prototypes before it, and any other Metal Gear, this would be the true successor. This even had the Street Fighter project installed with inside it that could make it use melee and use kicks. Aside from its rail guns, its lasers, its machine guns, its missile launchers, this thing is packed to be a beast. Have at you, Snake! Liquid Snake, the son of the legendary hero Big Boss, and also the brother of Snake. Both Liquid Snake and Solid Snake are identical twins. Of course, these two have their own unique personalities and abilities that set them apart. Solid Snake has the recessive genes, whereas Liquid has a some more superior genes from Big Boss. This is what makes Solid Snake highly impressive, is the fact that he's more dominant within his fights and battles, all considering that he has the weakest clone out of all. He doesn't let his genetics define who he is. He puts all his skills and combat knowledge together, and that's what gives him the edge within battle. It's a very fact as well that he carries that high immense of spirit that allows him to overcome insurmountable odds. Glukovich mercenaries, armed with AKS-74Us, they are expertly trained in infiltration combat takeovers as they did in the tanker, been able to flush out their enemies using thermal goggles, even having suppressors attached to their gun giving the edge in combat for surprise attacks. These military forces are well versed in using all different kinds of equipment, including grenades to flush out enemies. 
In Metal Gear Solid 2, Solid Snake only takes on two combat bosses. Unfortunately, the VR missions and Snake's tales do not count as they're considered not canonical to the story. But once again, Solid Snake demonstrating pure immense combat skill by suppressing and completely obliterating the likes of this mercenary unit with ease. Not too shabby, is it? New York, I mean. In the tanker incident, Solid Snake would face Olga Gerlukovic, the daughter of Sergei Gerlukovic. Yes, these guys are renowned within the works of Spetsnaz. And not to mention that they all have tricks up their sleeves, such as you've seen there with Olga's bullet knife. Nobody dodges a bullet knife trick like that, and Solid Snake did it with ease. The fact that a bullet travels at such high speed and velocity just demonstrates how badass Solid Snake really is. As you could imagine watching this video by now, you can understand why Solid Snake at this point is in his prime. He truly is a legendary mercenary. Even been a real pro and defeating Olga Gerlugovic non-lethal. Hey, if you're watching, don't forget to subscribe to the voice box. It really helps the channel out. The Beauty and the Beast unit, Laughing Octopus. This girl is an absolute master of disguise and camouflage by using Octo Camo in its most advanced form, even disguising herself within the environment by being able to turn into different objects, even mimicking different people. It's fair to say that she is the ultimate trickster. To avoid combat, she even sprays ink to hide herself whilst leaving a trap of self-guided Semitex grenades that detect nearby targets. And when it comes to mobility, she's very fast and agile as she can use her tentacle to make quick escapes and also land surprise attacks. Most notably, one of her most dangerous features is the fact that she has the ability to roll up into a ball, and if she rolls up and hits you, she can insta-kill you, making Solid Snake's objectives very difficult considering his condition. But Solid Snake is no laughing matter, as he would put this octopus out of commission. The second member of the Beauty and the Beast unit, Raging Raven. What is there more to say than this girl is burning with absolute pure hatred and rage that fuels her on her battle against Snake? She's armed with a grenade launcher, packed with tons of armor, not to mention she has the capability to go airborne with her jetpack-like suit and wings that are armed with missiles. Even unmanned drones that circle the watchtower, making Snake having to multitask whilst watching out for incoming attacks that blow the clock tower wide open. This one is a highly stressful combat mission for the likes of Snake, but one thing he's good at doing is keeping his cool and composure. With Snake using the clock tower for cover, makes a great way as well to open up for surprise attacks. The good news is that on Snake's final mission in the Guns of the Patriots, he has Drebin to get all the weapons he needs to bring down the bird. Brian Wolf exceeds exponentially in snowy environments by using her chirogenic suit that gives her the ability to move long distances and quickly. This giant big mech suit is designed into the shape of a wolf, enabling her to move on all fours. Her weapon of choice is a high-powered railgun sniper rifle that can see from long distances, along with her infrared sensors to be able to see through the snowstorm. Solid Snake has to rely on his NVG to be able to see within these harsh climates but is very limited in terms of movement. But with visibility being so poor, this would aid Snake in terms of being stealthy to plan out his attacks. To add to this challenging fight, Snake also must avoid several frog units. But with pure mastery of stealth infiltration and keeping Ghost, Solid Snake would manage to be able to beat this crying wolf. It means of also being a crack shot with the sniper himself. Naomi. This place will be your grave, as my queen wishes. The immortal vamp, completely unkillable by the fact that he has nanomachines that heal his wounds rapidly. With his unnatural unnerving movements and agility that makes him highly unpredictable in battle whilst throwing his blades. I truly believe that Solid Snake could have defeated Vamp by himself if he was given the chance. 
Whilst Ryder may have beaten Vamp if it wasn't for Snake injecting him with these nanomachine suppressants, there'd have been no way to put down the immortal vampire. And with this time round, Solid Snake using CQC makes him all the more badass within close quarters combat. Even at the old age, with Snake's health deteriorating and getting a lot worse throughout his mission, his level of knowledge and combat experience would outweigh that of Vamps. And the greatest thing that sells it for me is the fact that Snake didn't rely on any cybergenetics or any high-grade nanomachines to defeat arguably one of the toughest antagonists in the Metal Gear franchise. And if it doesn't get any more impressive than that, whilst Raiden would keep Vamp busy, Solid Snake would also take on several self-exploding Gecko units whilst having to carry a big heavy railgun. Liquid! Moses! Where our fates were born! And where yours ends, Snake! If Solid Snake couldn't get any more impressive, he would pilot Metal Gear Rex without any previous experience in the cockpit. Amazingly figuring out how to use all the controls for the different arsenal for what Rex carries. Impressively, he's also fighting Ray, the very mecha unit that is designed to destroy Metal Gear Rex units. And what's amazingly telling is out of anybody who's controlled a Metal Gear unit, Solid Snake has done it by far the best, considering he has no experience with these things at all. Well, aside from destroying them, of course. <laughs> Praying Mantis, the queen of the Beauty and the Beast unit, which ironically would bring back some unpleasant memories for Solid Snake. Praying Mantis has adopted many of the skills and personality of Psycho Mantis throughout the nanomachine level instead of the Psycho ability level, exploiting people's nanomachines in means of control and using them like puppets. She even had the ability to control Solid Snake's gunfire, making it so that any of his shots couldn't possibly land any damage on her. Solid Snake would have to utilize the nanomachine syringe to combat Mantis, and through absolute sheer skill, would use her own weapons against her, such as the Mantis doll, to instantly take her out of the game. Ah! 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 A the final fight to end all fights. This would be the last mission that Solid Snake would undertake in a hand-to-hand -hand combat duel with arguably one of the best fighters and the greatest antagonist that Metal Gear has seen. Between the boss, Big Boss, and Solid Snake, and Ocelot included, there is no better person that he could fight in terms of hand-to-hand -to, -hand to really prove exactly who is the top dog. It goes about saying that Solid Snake is the most fearsome combat warrior we've seen within the franchise, with a massive 40 bosses in total in which he has fought. But now we come to the decisive moment to determine really who is the ultimate soldier out of Big Boss and Solid Snake. In the intricate tapestry of Metal Gear Solid series, the narratives of Solid Snake and Big Boss unfold as an interconnected threads, weaving a complex and emotionally charged story of war, loyalty, and the consequences of one's actions. As Solid Snake, the iconic hero shaped by the burdens of his genetic legacy, undertakes missions throughout with peril and moral ambiguity. His journey becomes a testimony to the enduring struggle against the shadows of his past and the pursuit of semblance of peace. Meanwhile, Big Boss, once member and father figure to Solid Snake, embarks on a path married by betrayal, disillusionment, and the quest for where soldiers can find purpose and meaning as he grapples with the consequences of his choices. Big Boss evolves from a legendary hero into a complex anti-hero, challenging the very ideals he once fought for to defend. The series crescendos in a poignant culmination where Solid Snake and Big Boss find themselves confronting not just external threats, but the ghosts of their shared history. The resolution is not merely a clash of arms, but a profound exploration of identity, sacrifice, and the enduring legacy of warriors caught in the machinations of larger forces. In the farewell of Solid Snake and Big Boss, there is a bittersweet reconciliation and acknowledgement to the explorable passage of time and the toll of life spent on the crucible of conflict. As the echoes of their struggles resonate across the narrative landscape, the legacies of Solid Snake and Big Boss endure. 
Through their respective journeys, Metal Gear Solid leaves an incredible mark on the gaming landscape, inviting players from the Metal Gear community to reflect not only on the nature of heroism and villainy, but the very essence of what it means to be human in the face of adversity. In essence, there really is no winners and losers. Both of these were great men of their generation that fulfilled some of the most dangerous tasks. And for that, it's up to you as the viewer to decide truly who you felt like was the ultimate soldier. And whatever you choose and believe will be yours. This has been The Voice Box. Thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe and support the channel. And let me know in the comments section down below all the thoughts and feelings that you had with these legendary soldiers. Until we meet again. The world would be better off without snakes. This is good.